to do with it. I've got five knots then, I think. I've heard something. Kieran and I decided to leave the purser's office and return there 10 minutes later to see if the handprint on the chair had faded. Whilst we moved one floor down to D-deck, Carl and Stuart seemed to have made contact with the ghost that supposedly haunts door 13. It doesn't feel like the Queen Mary, because when we've been on, when we've been on vigils before, we're just very conscious that we're on. Do you think that's from outside? It's difficult to tell, but whatever it is, I don't like it. That's not outside. No. That is not outside. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Shot of me holding your hand. Okay. By now, Carl and Stuart had left the ship's stern and met up with both Johns to explore the swimming pool's changing rooms, another area said to be rife with ghostly apparitions. This is the dressing room. So it does stink. <laughs> you tell me if this is no different. Oh, it's kind of Yeah, I can't see a thing. Can you see down there? I can't see a thing, Stuart. No. This must be male and female changing rooms. This, this here is a dividing door. This one's across. So we are smack bang in the middle of this. So if anything, um, is that Kieran? Hello? Is that Kieran? Anyone there? No? What, did, what have you just seen? Don't, don't say you've just seen something, Cal. I did, I just saw, thought, has Kieran got a white shirt on? No, don't do that to us. We've only been in here five minutes, pal. Carl had been mistaken. Who had he seen? Certainly not Kieran, who stood with me in the purser's office two floors above. Yeah, it's gone. So? The handprint is gone. Which means that we're doing that experiment because there was still warmth on the seat of the chair after I had sat on it and it was about 10 minutes had gone by. Yeah. So, put my hand on there and after 10 minutes it's gone. Um, and that's quite unusual. That is, that's very strange. I was sitting on the chair for a while, um, but still it was glowing red. Yeah, glowing red and t I know, 10 minutes normally, 10 minutes yeah. Was, and you could feel it to the touch of Yeah. As one mystery unfolded before our eyes, another awaited Kieran. Hearing of Carl's sighting of a similar-looking man, he rushed down to join this vigil. And before long, more mystery and mayhem landed at his feet. <laughs> Carl! What was that? Where was that? Was that in here? Guys! I'm gone. Someone's just, there's a tile just going. Someone falling, there's someone falling. I'm going, I don't know. Are you alright? You alright? Yeah. What's happened? There's someone falling over? No. What's happened? Massive crash here. Hey? Massive crash. I heard a crash. You are shitting me. Something came out of this hole. 
just five crew members were assigned to this investigation and all were stood at least 30 feet away as a tile smashed against a wall on the far side of the pool, another development that stunned the group. And the force with which we can all hear it break surely rules out the possibility of the tile falling from the wall. F-Deck's former first-class swimming pool is considered one of the ship's most paranormally active areas. And apart from an absence of water, it is indeed a place where time has stood still, and we had to return. This time to see what David Wells thought of this truly amazing environment. I hate this place. <laughs> Are you nervous? Yeah. The atmosphere just changes. Oh no. In a, in a second, doesn't it? As soon as something happens, everything. If there is a spirit person, an astral being, a child, a woman, a man, a gentleman... I've just seen one at what? the top of the stairs there. What? I saw a head at the top of the stairs run down. Please. Oh, a small, small thing. Yeah, a small one. Like a child? Yeah. If there's like a little girl or a little boy here... ..that loves swimming, please don't be frightened. Please come forward, please try and talk to us. We don't mean you any harm. Come and play. I do feel as if I'm being watched here, you know. I feel as, as if you're being watched. I do. It's freezing. What was that? That was me breathing in. Do it again. That was a whistle. It was not. Oh, no. No? It didn't sound to me like you're breathing in. Oh, God, that scared me to death. What was, what was that it? voice? Was it? central bit were um, right in front of me. I just had a cold blast of air on my face. It almost felt like somebody touched my ponytail then. Like the little girl. <gasps> That's what we had when we were in the change rooms, wasn't it? What is that? Is there anybody there? What about if we went up the top? Oh, I suddenly come over really sick. Really? I come over really, like... Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I've not eaten much. I haven't eaten... Well, you no. know I haven't... Mm. Oh, so, you know when you get the saliva in your jaws? You sweat. Mm. Are you... I'm seeing, I don't know if it's just the corner of the eye or anything, but every, every, I just feel like there's something running around the top level. Every, every time I look, I'm just missing. I just get the sense of something going around. Do we go, can we go up to the top? Yeah. yeah. We just got these things here. Then we should go up there. What? I just saw someone sat there, sat on the edge of the slide. Are you kidding? Did you? Are you alright? Yeah. What, what did they look like? A woman, was she wearing swimwear? Yeah, why? Oh, wow. Well. This is incredible. This, I've never, I've just never experienced anything like this. Full apparitions and strange phenomena, and yet more paranormal activity still stood by. One question now loom large. Is the Queen Mary America's, or even the world's, most haunted? I'm a bit worried about Carl. That is not outside. That is absolutely awesome.